my 200 plus pound girls stop stop making excuses stop making excuses that like you can't be loved okay let me just tell you you deserve love you deserve to find a man that will love every inch of you and it exists because my husband loves every part of me doesn't matter if i've gained weight if i've lost weight he loves every inch which is not a good thing by the way if you have somebody in your life and they're doing bad things and you're just condoning those bad things because you think it's a good idea that your husband loves every inch of you which is not even necessarily a, a good thing like what if your wife had foot fungus like would you then go no babe i love every inch of you i no don't get rid of the chlamydia i love every inch of you let's just no babe stop I know your arm fell off, but it's okay. I love every inch of you, even the new inches that are not there anymore. Like it's 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 just bullshit logic. You should want to be with somebody that encourages change or at least tries to push you in the better direction because sometimes people have bad habits and it's not a good idea to continue with those bad habits. Sometimes you don't even know you have the bad habits unless you initiate into a relationship and then you realize, "Oh my god, like I'm actually terrible in relationships." And that's okay. It's all right to be in a relationship and this, the person that you're with encourages those changes. Like if, as long as they're beneficial for you and the people around you, I don't see that being a bad thing. And I really hate the ideology of like, you deserve, you deserve, you deserve because you can say I deserve and then never find anybody to be with because you're working under this assumption that you deserve it. And eventually, of course, if you deserve it, you're going to find somebody. And also it's an entitlement mentality. Everybody is working in the dating market. Everybody is trying to find somebody to be with. And if you're working under the idea that you're just going to deserve somebody, are you not like working for it? Are you not like trying to better yourself to make sure that the person that you are eventually with, it likes you? Like, how does this work exactly? And again, I don't like having to play the lottery anytime that I want to meet somebody to date. Like if you're sitting there going, there is somebody out there for you regardless, that's going to love every inch of you. Sure, there might be somebody out there that just doesn't give a fuck about you and will love every single inch of you, but why would you be playing the lottery on that? How do you know you even like this guy to begin with? And so that just made me think, like, why do us bigger, curvier girls think we don't deserve it? Most people don't deserve it. It's not It's not a deserved game. It, it takes a lot of deliberate work to be attractive to another person. And a lot of people don't even understand why they're even attracted to other people to begin with. Like, if you're sitting here and you're going, why do we think that we are not the people that deserve love? Most people do not deserve love. You have to work for that shit. You have to actually put an effort and deliberate effort in order to make yourself appealing to another person. Not just having the idea in your head of, okay, what do I want in a person? I want them to have a good career. I want them to have a good car. I want them to drive a nice car. I want them to have this much money. I want them to be this way in life. And then the people, what they'll tend to do is they'll project that outward and they'll go, okay, since I want all of this, they must also want all of this for me, which is not the case. So when you say like, why don't we deserve this stuff? It's not so much about deserved. It's more so about like, what are you doing to make your yourself as desirable as humanly possible to another person? It's not about deserved because if it was about deserved, then you would have a man's by now or like, I mean, she's married, but you know what I'm saying? Like it would be you, everybody would have a man's is and everybody would have a woman's, but obviously it's not how that happens. There's work involved. You have to actually make yourself attractive. Also, like if we're not confident in ourselves, what makes you think a man's going to be like, yeah, confidence is most definitely a very attractive trait, but you know what else is a very attractive trait? Not having to worry about your health issues because you're 350 pounds. Like that shit should not be something I have to worry about. If you're in a relationship, there shouldn't be a, a an underlying threat of, of problems or health complications because the partner that you're with is drastically overweight. I just, I am of the firm belief that if you're in a relationship with somebody, it should not be complicated. Like it should not be extra on your life, at least not in the sense of like more problems, extra in the sense of like now it's, it's, you know, you have more to deal with, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. You put two and two together and the outcome of that, usually how I like to look at it is like the fusion dance. You guys know when you fusion dance in Dragon Ball Z, it, like Goku, Goku X Vegeta, it's not Goku plus Vegeta, it's multiplicative. So when me and you come together, we're better together multiple times compared to what we would have been if we were just solo. So when I hear these people say this stuff, it almost kind of seems like they don't actually understand why they're in relationships. And they're just like, 
I think a lot of people have like Disney Disney ideas of the way relationships should work. And I understand this woman is married, which is great. You know, beautiful, amazing rock. Her husband did her right with that rock, right? I know every girl wants the big rock, but I, it just kind of screams if you're in a relationship with somebody and, and this guy is not he's not saying anything about your weight or he's not saying anything about, you know, maybe the things that you're doing that he doesn't like or, you know, any of this stuff, that's not a good thing. That's just somebody that doesn't care about you. That's just an enabler. That's just somebody that's just coasting with you. Is it, wouldn't it be better to be with somebody that's actually going to call you out? Drawn to that. So it's not so much about how much you weigh. It's about what you portray about yourself. It's mm, that only goes so far, dude. And you know, that only goes so far. How many times have you heard women go, I am ugly or I am fat and men don't want to approach me. And if they do approach me, it's usually because they want to have sex with me, which is like 99% of men in general already. So why would you then induce those problems upon yourself purposefully knowing that this is going to be an issue? And I know this woman is flat out lying here talking about, oh yeah, it's all about the confidence. It's obviously not all about the confidence. Confidence can only take you so far. Like if you're 300 pounds and you're trying to approach men, you're going like my vagina is the best vagina on the planet. It's so good. It's got that macaroni and cheese. Good shit. Come over here and get that gushy. Uh, that only goes so far and uh, you need the looks to back it up most of the time and you need to know who you're marketing for. So like most men are visual. So if you're not attractive, that's going to immediately like <laughs> stub you in the toe. It's not going to be very incentivized for most men. So if you're not applying to those things, majority speaking, you're going to be failing most of the time. So if you can find a way to love yourself, that opens up a space where I'm... Whenever I hear somebody say, find a way to love yourself, I always think about like, beating off like loving yourself you know like that's what i think of i know that's not what she means by that but that's what i imagine so if you can find a way to love yourself that opens up a space where a man can love you exactly where you are because picture this you don't love yourself right and a man gives you a compliment you think you're gonna take it you think you're gonna take that compliment no you won't you literally won't because you don't believe it so then that's just gonna like not make the man interested anymore you People have a way of taking compliments and certain compliments are more valuable depending on who is giving the compliment and where you receive it. So if for me, I know that if somebody compliments me on my physical appearance, I don't really care. Physical appearance compliments to me don't really matter. I don't really care about like whether or not somebody thinks I'm attractive or not attractive or thinks that my mustache is nice. Like it's cool when people do give me compliments, but I'm not like, it's not usually like a big deal for me. Whereas I know other people may find that to be a big deal, but it's also determined based off of things like who is saying these, these messages. So like, for instance, if it's just a random guy on the internet or it's just some random dude on the street that said, Hey, Oh my God, you're so beautiful. You're so great. You smell so amazing today. Like, that's really not going to probably hit as hard as it would have if it was your boyfriend, wife, husband, all this other stuff, family members maybe. That's going to be way more valuable because you know that these people are actually genuinely interested in your life, not just past the point of you looking good that day. So, I mean, past the point of you looking good that day. So, when you hear these compliments, they hit harder and they're more valuable depending on where you are. So, I, I see what she's saying, but... Loving yourself in what degree? Like accepting that there is things about you that, that you cannot change. Okay. But if you're if there are things about you that you can change and you're just accepting yourself the way that is, that's not a good thing. That's actually actively pursuing negative behaviors. You deserve to be in a relationship. You don't need to lose weight to be in a relationship. You don't need to lose weight to be in a relationship. It's just significantly harder to acquire a relationship when you're two, three, four hundred pounds. You deserve love as you are in whatever size body you got. You see, like she's saying this and it's nice. It's a really nice thing to say. I, I will I will say it is a nice thing to say, but it's not reflected of reality. Like how many people do you know that think I deserve love? I deserve a marriage. I deserve a relationship, a boyfriend, a girlfriend and they never get it. So like, I hear what you're saying, but it's not really helping anybody because if somebody genuinely has real problems, like say for instance, you hit up a guy and the guy goes, I haven't like had sex in nine years and I haven't been in a relationship in, you know, the same amount of time. And I, I struggle to talk to women. I struggle to talk to anybody. And it's like, I probably approached, I probably talked to over a thousand women in the last nine years. And every single one of them has denied me. What do I do? And you tell that person, Oh, you're good. You're perfect exactly the way you are. You're fine. 
well, bro, obviously something isn't fucking working. And if you tell that person that, that yes, they're, you know, you're good the way that you are, that's, that's actively hurting that person. And then also, if that person actually is exhibiting bad behaviors and you tell that person, nah, you're good, they're going to continue with those bad behaviors. So you're just going to get, you're just, it's just bad advice. This is just really bad advice. You should want to change. You should not have to. You should want to be a different person from the time that you were 18 to the time that you were 30. There should be hopefully growth in the, involved in that. And hopefully, you're not as entitled as you deserve, you deserve, you deserve. Because love is more than a size. I'm <laughs> Yo, these this buzzword bingo right now. Love is not a size. Yes, love is not a size. You could you could potentially find a boyfriend at 350 pounds, but most of the time when you're at 350 and you find a boyfriend, that guy's probably not with you because he's probably not with you because of how you are, like, you know, like mentally speaking or like all the stuff behind that. And he might just be there because, wow, your butt cheeks really in the shape of two watermelons that have been left in the sun for four days. Like, you know, like that's that might be it. And proof. There's proof that you can exist in a bigger body and you can be loved. But the, the proof is just like. Oh man, dude. It's like it, it's like going, "Oh yeah, there's proof that when you don't wear your seatbelt and you get into a car accident, that the the chances of you surviving are also there." So does that mean that we should never wear a seatbelt? Fuck no. It's called averages. Just because you are a plus-size girly or you're a fat girly and you got a relationship in a man's is a husband doesn't mean that that's going to be reflected of the majority of the population. Do you not know what averages are? This is like it's such a bad way of trying to if your advice only caters to like 1% of people and everybody else is just left in the dirt, it's bad advice. So if your advice here is, oh, don't worry, girls, it's it's no problem. You'll get a man eventually. Guys love you exactly the way you are. And you're an example? I don't care. That doesn't mean anything. Your advice is literally meaningless given the fact that everybody is having problems in these brackets. So, no, it's dumb. It's stupid. Stop saying this. And every single part of your body can be loved. But what, why do you want every single part of your body to be loved? Like, what do you have cancer? Like, what are you fucking... Okay, it's just terrible, man. Terrible. Don't listen to that. That was really bad advice. Don't listen to that. Plus size dating. I deserve love. I'm in love. Let's talk about it. In my last YouTube video, I talked about my plus size dating experiences. The fact that I've been single for 10 years. That's crazy, dude. It's always insane to me when I see women that have been single for 10 years. I'm not saying that women can't be without relationships for 10 years, but most of the time when men are in like those situations where they haven't dated in that amount of time, it's usually because they're just really trash men or they're antisocial or something else is going on. But for women, um, from the time like women are 12 years old, they're, they're always going to be romantically pursued. So it's always so interesting to me when I see a woman and they go, I haven't been in a relationship for 10 years, I always go, how? Like, how did that happen? Don't get me wrong. I know that there are women that do have these, like, issues and problems and things like that. But usually, um, it's not as difficult as it is for men. But go off, queen. And just that it's overall hard out here. I approach this video from many perspectives. If, I just want to know why. Like, if you're, if you're single for 10 years, like, what is prohibiting you? Um, oftentimes I see if it's 10 years, like, what is it? Like, she's not that unattractive. I don't know what the rest of her body looks like, but most people are totally okay with dating. Uh, not most people, but a lot of people are okay with dating a plus size girl. If the other things are also there, like you might find somebody that could forgive you on that stuff. Like it's not impossible, right? Like the other girl said, but I would love to know, is it the standards? Like, do you just have really high standards? You just have like oh no, I'm not settling type shit. Like I, I just, I, I just, it's such a crazy thing to be single for 10 years straight as a woman. Of course, first and foremost, acknowledging the unique aspects of dating as a plus size woman, the over-sexualization of plus size women. The over-sexualization of women in general, dude. Women in general are over-sexualized. I don't even, I don't know to what degree more plus size is, is or being fat is more fetishized. I don't know. Personally, I would suspect that it's not as much, but I could be wrong. And so much more. And while I acknowledge that skinny women are literally having the same issues as me, I lost count of how many comments were just people telling me I need to lose weight. I need to focus on self-love. I need to focus on myself. Don't worry about it, man. You need to take care of yourself first. You're pretty in the face, but you just need to- You know how disrespectful it is for somebody to say you're pretty in the face? 
That's not a compliment, dude. I, I got to tell you, it's just not a compliment, dude. That means they're literally telling you, you got one thing and that's it. Like everything else is busted beyond belief. That's, it's not a compliment. That's actually terrible. That is gross. That is so bad, dude. So I hope that, I hope that whoever said that to her is not a friend anymore. That's a crazy. Yourself first. You're pretty in the face, but you just need to lose some weight. Then you'll find a man. First and foremost, weight is not my problem when it comes to finding a man. Oh man, that's tough, dude. All right, the weight may not be, okay, that's obviously not true. That cannot be true, dude. What is this copium that these people smoke today nowadays, man? It's just, it's so crazy. Obviously, it's prohibiting you, right? To some degree or another, you're literally talking about the disadvantages of being plus size in the sense of like men fetishizing you and the over-sexualization of plus size women or whatever. So you're acknowledging this and then you go and say that you're, it, the weight is not the problem. Why not? I'm sure that there are other things like maybe you're a shit human being or maybe there are things that are like other other aspects of your life like i don't know maybe you're a dog person and they have cats there could be other things too but the weight is most definitely affecting it wait then you'll find a man first and foremost weight is not my problem when it comes to finding a man does that impact the experience absolutely but that's not my problem my problem is that i have standards you can have standards and can you be like bro are you so you haven't got a boyfriend in 10 years because of your standards. What are your standards, dude? What do you want from a man exactly, bro? 10 years? You met, How many dudes have you met in that 10 years and you haven't met a single dude? Standards are okay, but people need to be very malleable nowadays. I don't know. If you're literally going, he has 9 out of 10, right? 9 out of 10. Near perfect. But that last one is just not it and then you dismiss the guy, that's stupid. That is really dumb. Because if you have standards like he can't watch anime or must not like Star Wars or has to drive car before a certain year or has to have penis girth around this level, like that stuff is irrelevant. And I understand that a lot of people, it might be important to them. But oftentimes I find is that the things that people think are the most important are really not. And the other things are that you so, like you find out later on, right? And don't get me wrong. I'm not saying people shouldn't have standards. You should. But if this is literally holding you back from dating for 10 years, your standards are too high. Your standards are way too high. There's no other way to say that. 10 years of nothing and you, you your standards are not high. Okay, whatever, bro. I mean, that's crazy. That's insane, bro. Does that impact the experience? Absolutely. But that's not my problem. My problem is that I have standards. Standards. Because if weight was an issue, why are the skinny girls being done dirty? Oh, man, that's a really, that's a really stupid thing to say. That's a really stupid thing to say. You need to look at averages, okay? Averages. We're talking about literally averages right now. You are outside the median value of that. You are an exception, all right? You're not the rule. So when you see normal sized girls having problems with the relationships, do you think that they are to the same degree compared to you? Why would you ever? I hate it so badly when these people in these communities try to compare themselves to other people in communities when the crossover is literally non-existent. You guys are not normal. It is a you guys having problems with dating is going to be way different compared to a thinner person having problems with dating because they don't have to deal with the same problems that you do. And you can say the same thing on the other end, which is like they don't have to deal with the same problems that you do, right? I get it. But the weight is going 100% be an issue. Think about if you were a really, really pretty girl. Now, most guys are probably going to want to be with you, right? But if you have really, really bad standards, you're never going to find a guy. Now, stack on 400 pounds. It's almost going to be impossible, which is probably why she has not had a man in 10 plus years, which is crazy, by the way. Quickly, some of the baddest of the baddest are being drugged through the mud by these men. Oftentimes, I feel like when people are in relationships, people have misideas about how relationships should transpire because we grew up on Disney or we grew up in environments where it, it was very unrealistic standards that were put upon you. A lot of people have – the amount of people that I meet nowadays that have a fundamentally misunderstand – they misunderstand what a relationship is is insane. Like if you talk to somebody nowadays and you go, tell me about what your relationship should be. They'll t I've, I've had people tell me 
that person needs to be there for me 24 7 they need to hear what i have to say all the time they need to you have to you know like we have to delegate stuff we have to always like overcommit. we have to commit to stuff and i always think i don't know if you know but if you're in a relationship the other person that's in a relationship is also a fully autonomous human being so like it's you and then that person but the way I like to look at it is that other person is the icing on the cake of your life and vice versa. They are the, you are their icing on the cake in their life. You're just there to make things better. You're not there to create them. You're not there to make their life. None of that. You're just there to enhance their life and hopefully make it easier. So when I hear people say like, oh, um, thinner girls are being treated badly, I I'm not doubting that thinner girls are not being treated badly, but I don't think that it's like valid to use that as a claim to the, for the reason why you don't have a boyfriend. Like that's, it's just such a dumb thing to say. Like obviously you being fat is going to increase those chances of not being able to get a, a man. Some of them look like they crawled from earth and they still doing the baddies wrong. So please, I beg, let that narrative go. It's I crazy. talked about the fact that, you know, I am losing weight and getting a man is not the only reason. However, it's something in the back of my mind. But that's because the reality is... The you shouldn't also, like, if you want to get a boyfriend or a girlfriend, don't think that you're a bad person for that. It's okay to have communication. It's okay to have, want companionship. It's okay to have those things. It's a good thing, okay? But oftentimes, I feel like having those things happen without you forcing them to happen is much better. You know, it's like show, don't tell. Right? You know, when you meet somebody on the first time and you have like a Lamborghini, it's always better for that person to ask, hey, what kind of car do you have? Then you just saying straight out, oh, did I tell you that I have a Lamborghini? It's always better that way. So the same thing here, like working on yourself and making yourself more and more attractive while through the process of like being on dating apps or meeting people is really good. The more traditionally attractive you are, the more access you have in the dating pool. The so same. Like, how can you acknowledge this stuff and then also say that the weight is not a problem? Okay. Dating pool that has a little poopery floating around in it. So it's still up to you to decide. Yeah, and that's a really big problem is that when you're, when you're in the dating market, there are a lot of really, really shit people. Okay, look, I've only ever dated women, so I can't look at it from the aspect of a woman dating a man. But I presume, given the scenarios and the experience that I have with men, that it's probably not very good. Because I've been sexually harassed by men multiple times asking for dick pics, asking for butthole pictures, which I don't even know how I would even do that. And I know it's probably very, very concerning and disconcerting. And it's like probably you just dismiss men altogether, which is really sad because there are a lot of great guys and uh, you shouldn't be dissuaded by the really, really bad ones, right? But I see it nonetheless, right? People have experiences and then suddenly after enough experiences... They go, I don't want to talk to these people anymore. They just seem all bad. Fuck men. Men are terrible. I get it. But it's also not like a very, it's not a very productive way of living your life. But when I see people going through, I got to go back. Hold on. The same dating pool that has little. Right. Yeah. There are bad guys. That's why I think like the more attractive that you are, because when you're plus size or when you're fat, you're reducing the amount of candidates that are coming to the table because just baseline most people are most people like i said most people are not going to be attracted to people that are fundamentally suffering on a daily basis and that means weight so if you are suffering from the effects of weight um most people don't want to deal with it so you're gonna have a reduced dating pool take what you would have had and it's funneled it's funneled into like a couple like or like a very small percentage of what it could be but if you make yourself more attractive and you do the work to make yourself more attractive, and yes, this means losing weight, then you open up that funnel and then you can decide out, out of all the candidates which one you want to be with as opposed to what everybody says is that somebody's out there that's going to love you eventually, which is crazy. This woman's literally waited 10 years. How much more waiting do you think she's got to do? Poopery floating around in it. So it's still up to you to decipher if the person is a good person or not. But to sit here and tell me like, oh yeah, you've been single 10 years, you just need to keep doing self-work. Baby, what do you think I've been doing these last? You, sometimes people will do self-work, but their idea of self-work is like, it's, I'm not saying that it's not good, but sometimes people avoid the biggest, the biggest, the most important stuff for like menial things. And I'm not saying that stuff can't help. Like people will often say like, oh, I worked on my personality. I worked on my job, I worked on getting more money, I worked on this, and I'm not saying that can't be important, but you have to know what you're in the market for. If you're like dating, 
men most of the time like if you're going on a date do you think that guy's gonna care that you had a degree in this particular thing or you have a nice house or a nice car or like you know what i'm talking about like or your 401k like most dudes well, they just want to see that you're pretty. And then the other stuff is there too. Don't get me wrong. Guys do appreciate the other stuff. But being attractive, and this works for both men and women, but it's a little bit more incentivized for women to be more attractive since that's like the primary way women are judged in our society. I don't agree with it, but that's the way it is. It's, 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 it's what it is, okay? So if you're sitting here and you're going, I did a lot of like self-work to make myself more valuable. I'm not doubting that. But why didn't you decide to lose weight until now? Like, why did it take this long for you to hit this? Oh, maybe I should lose weight now. That's two years. Huh? And I'm not saying there's no more work to do because there's always more work to do. But my work that I got to do, I can do it with somebody else. I don't got that much work that I need to do on myself that I can't do it with another person. I mean, I agree. Like, if she wants to find somebody to be with, I, mean, I hope she finds somebody to be with. Like, 10 years is crazy. So whatever strategy she was using, whatever strategy she was using before, I hope she's no longer employing that strategy because that's not good, dude. You're literally failing for 10 years. So I hope it's something different. Some like losing weight, maybe. That could probably be something that you could do. I got some work. That needs to be done alone and with a therapist. As a fat, we've talked about things that we're not allowed to do. Let's talk about some things that we are actually required to do as a fat by skinny people. It's like just kind of an expectation. We keep backing off of the fact that we're not allowed to think that anyone has a crush on us because we're fat and not therefore obviously ugly, disgusting, no one wants to have a crush on us. We also have to have a crush on everyone else. And let me explain. Does anyone else feel like a lot of skinny people will flirt? through you like anytime i talked to a man like in high school people would be like oh, you have a crush on him like that's so cute i literally don't like i was just speaking to him they're like don't even deny it girl like it's okay i see you and i'm like no actually i see you i think you have a crush on him and you're people people do project dude people do project a lot i remember when i was in high school right there was this girl that like f like finally there was a okay context i went to a very predominantly black school and there were maybe in total three white kids in the entire school and i would get mistaken for them all the time because there was only three of them right but one day at the be very beginning of the school year a white girl rolled up in school and i didn't even look at this girl but then i knew a black i had a black friend and he saw me look at her for a second right because she came into the classroom and he was like ah oh, david i know what you i know what you i know what you got bro i know what you're doing and i was like oh yeah he was like yeah i know it bro i know you looking at what's her name and i was like oh i mean yeah i mean she's yeah cool bro she's a cool person and then uh did, did people will do that like it, it's just kind of weird though sometimes when people will like <laughs> like force you almost like it's i'm not saying that they themselves are the ones that want to be with them but it's so weird how some people think like that but um I'm a snow bunny, so, you know, I've, I've only ever dated black women. But it's 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 very interesting that these people say that. Like, I don't think that fat women or fat people in general are less inherently valuable. Like, you're a human being. Like, I, I agree. But you have to at least understand that these things are going to negatively affect you. And you know that they do. Like, I hear it consistently. These people complain about their problems over and over and over again. And if you're having these same problems, like, dude, you need to lose weight. That shit is obviously negatively affecting you. But, uh... I really love these makeup sponges because they feel so cool when you push them together. Using me, like having a crush and making it as a joke to, as an excuse to talk to this man. And that's like weird. Maybe, this is Maybe that's something you got to do with your friends. Like talk to your friends about that, dude. If they're using you as like a segue to get to somebody else so they can talk to them, but they're gaslighting you into thinking that you like them so you can initiate the conversation. But either way, they're just using you, which inherently is not a bad thing. Like, it's okay to be used by your friends as long as it's like a mutual thing or it's like an understanding thing. You know what I'm talking about? Like, hey, bro, I have, I'm having a problem with this game. Can, can you help me? You, you, you are technically using them, but it's okay because you're friends and that's all right to happen. But this just kind of sounds really malicious. Like, your friend is... <laughs> Your friend is literally like, oh my god, you have a crush on him. Let's go talk to him. And then jumping off of you to talk to them. That's crazy. This is where the that's like basically like, bro, that's like literally showing the bait and then jumping on the hook. All right, right when the fish gets caught. Like, that's what I'm, <laughs> that's crazy. Like feeling of, you know, being fat and having a crush on someone makes you feel like a monster. Yeah, what is that, dude? What are you talking about? Like, I mean, I can't, okay. 
you feel like a monster because why? Because you know that you are fundamentally unattractive in the spectrum of society. So if you think having a crush on this other person is like a, oh my God, like I know I'm unattractive. I know I'm like obviously the bottom of the barrel when it comes to society and physically speaking. And this guy obviously is way higher than me. So the thought of me having an attraction to him is like, I don't know, like monstrously like that to me i get it i understand it but it's just such a weird way of rationalizing it it's because the expectation and the way that straight people make it seem like when you do have a crush is so uncomfy like i love when i mean i mean this is the point of the video but i love when people will point out what other people do but never look at what they're doing it's just it's just really interesting oh my god she has a crush on you I know a lot of fat people relate to this one. You feel like you always have to be funny. I think everyone expects us to be like Melissa McCarthy, Rebel Wilson. Like Sometimes what happens is when you're not the most attractive person, you need to pick up other character traits in order to make yourself more attractive. And this can work really well for a lot of people. I often tell like dudes guys that if you want to like you may not be the most conventionally attractive guy like for me for instance i always like to look at myself as like a five and maybe a six on like a really good day but there are things that you can do in order to take that five or six and turn that into a seven or an eight it may be more ambiguous than what like a, a seven or an eight would look like conventionally but it's still there that number is still there it's just under the surface more right and things could include being funnier, being better in social situations, making more money, being more confident, like going to the gym. These things will all make you more attractive. Um, so sometimes I agree, like if you're if you're not conventionally attractive, this other stuff could most definitely enhance your physical, it could enhance you in a non-conventional way. But I don't think that just because you're fat, that means that you're guaranteed to be funny. I think I met a lot of people that are very funny and they're not they're not fat and I've met a lot of fat people that would just weren't that, that thought they were they were funny but they just weren't every fat person has but let me know down below what you guys think about that to be funny you no know, sometimes I do feel like a joke to a lot of people and yeah well, humbling I mean I kind of don't really hate it that much because then no one takes you seriously I feel like if you're fat you're required to always like kind of come with a disclaimer that you're trying to lose weight. Like, I feel like any time I come in contact with like a new person, the fact that I'm on a weight loss journey comes up very quickly. But it's because I feel like fat people always have to be like working on themselves and like trying. Yeah, because you're in a realm of unsustainability. Like being fat and or obese means that you're literally dying. And it also means that you're incredibly unhealthy which means it's not a good thing. So if you do come into a situation where somebody wants to be your boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, it is very important for that person to know that this isn't always going to be you and they hope that you're not always going to be in a suffering situation. So that's usually like, yeah, like obvious fucking Lee, dude. Yeah, that's like literally going to a car market and like seeing a car that's on life support, like falling apart and you go, uh, but I'm only going to drive this car for like two months, right? And then like after that, I get the better car, right? And they go, yeah, 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 that's going to definitely happen. That's what you're basically doing. You're just like, you're telling them like, oh, I am losing weight. I'm going to be better in the future. So it's more like a, you're investing almost. Trying to like lose weight. And also if I like order a salad, people will be like, you're, who are you fooling? True. What do you want from me? I don't know. Or if I go to the- Lose weight. I don't know. Like for me, I don't want anything. Like it's whatever. She can do whatever she wants. But- if you're talking about like what do you want from me in the market of dating be attractive don't be mean uh hopefully be a personable person you know these are very good traits that people should probably embody as much as being healthy these things are super super incentivized in the dating market and that's like the number one things like most of the time if you ask guys what they want in a girl it's usually just like a few different things it's like she has to be nice she has to be like average and healthy for the most part like you know like most guys are not trying to date women that are very very obese and things could be a little bit different for women usually uh i hope he washes his butthole i hope he knows how to do dishes hopefully he makes money you know things like that but it's usually like you know how the health markers are also there as well jim i just feel like ostracized but you're also telling me to lose weight but then you get mad at me for doing the things that 
help me lose weight. So like, what is that? What? Literally, are you okay? Apparently, if you're fat and in a relationship with someone who's skinny, you actually have to be a millionaire. I'll see. Uh, if you're fat and you're in a relationship with somebody that's skinny, I, I would very much want to understand, like, what your eating habits are compared to them. Because, like, are they not telling you what they're doing? Are they not, like, trying to help you out? It's always a red flag to me when I see people that have these issues because I always think, you're with somebody that knows this stuff and somehow you're still having this problem why are they not helping you like i understand sometimes when you're in a relationship it's easier to let things slide than to actually address the problems because you feel like in the moment it's going to be a lot of work and a lot of like arguing or a lot of whatever the fuck but it's better for the long term because if you deal with it now you you cut it off before it can grow Whereas if you let it fester and grow and ferment, then suddenly your girlfriend that's, I don't know, 20, 30 pounds over is now 80, 90 pounds over and you're resenting her more and more every single day because you're not attracted to fat people. And that's all right. It's okay to not be attracted to people that you don't want to be attracted to. But you should be voicing that as much as you possibly can because it's very important for you to find the person that you're with to be attractive. That's like the, one of the number one things that you should be doing. So anyway. Couples on TikTok of like a skinny man who's attractive dating a fat girl, which all of the comments will be like, she must be fucking loaded. Like she has the most money in the world. I don't often see that by the way. I have met some guys before that have been sugar babies, like guys that were being paid by women to have sex with them and eat out their vaginas and stuff like that like it's not uncommon there's literally like an app dedicated to like older women hiring guys to like hang up curtains for five hours or fixing their pipes not like sex or anything like that but like male escort services where guys are doing guy stuff even though like i don't know like i mean i've had i've had conversations with people nowadays where they go oh wow you don't know how to like fix your plumbing you don't know how to like fix a car you don't want to like change a tire and then i always think like no no nah, no nah. like I, I didn't go to school to be a plumber i didn't go to school to for like culinary expertise i didn't do it like it's okay to think it's okay to not know how to do stuff because even though like let's say for instance 60 70 years ago these guys did know how to do that stuff they were in a different they were in a different culture so having to know that stuff was incentivized but nowadays most people don't even need to do that. Like most people, mo a lot of cars are very reliable. So there's that. And then also you're making money now. So you can probably pay somebody else like a mechanic to do that for you. And it may not be as convenient as you yourself getting underneath your car and fixing it. But the point I'm making is you are specialized. Most people are specialized. Most people are only really good at like one, two, three, four things. Not, not like, and even back then, like a guy that knew how to fix your sink, a car and something else, that was his skills, right? We just put our skills in different stuff. You're not less manly, by the way. I'm going to keep it a buck. I hate this idea. You're not less manly or less masculine because you don't know how to change a tire. You're not less manly or mes less masculine because you don't know how to change or like fix the plumbing in your house or whatever. You, in the same way that you're not less womanly because you don't know how to make a lasagna or like you, you, or you work a nine to five. That doesn't mean that you're less womanly. That just means that things have changed. And these are the cultural norms nowadays. And it's okay to pick up some conventionally masculine traits and then other conventionally feminine traits. You understand? Like, it's all right. These things have changed. We're, we're in a different culture and timeline nowadays. What, like, if you're fat, uh, you have to date only ugly people or other fat people. Yeah, because other fat people and ugly people, in my opinion, are basically the same thing. I'm not saying all fat people are ugly, but the way I like to look at it is if you were ordinarily a 10, let's say, let's say hypothetically that you were ordinarily, ordinarily a 10. If you put on an extra 20, 30 pounds, you're a nine or you're an eight. Like you are literally reducing your number on the scale. You may not be ugly, but you're most definitely not what you could be. You are actively reducing your, 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 um, your scale, your number. You understand what I'm talking about? Like, it's not that you're, you're not inherently ugly, but you're, you're definitely like passively negatively affecting you. If that makes sense. In society's standards as ugly. You show people like a picture of your boyfriend or girlfriend and they're like, oh, they're actually cute. Like, what do you mean by actually? <laughs> Nobody's seen the movie Hairspray. Like, was I also think that like 
people put too much value sometimes on what the other person looks like physically speaking and i think that can probably be okay depending on what you're talking about because i know a lot of guys that will date very very attractive women and other guys will go damn bro you really got a catch you really got like a great one bro that girl is like she looks amazing right but then the girl is like ass like she's terrible she's disgusting like it's awful but like the, but it doesn't matter because like surface level that's what people look at and I think it's just like really interesting how people put so much value on somebody physically speaking, but um, that doesn't actually mean anything if you're in a relationship with somebody for like two, three, four, five, six, seven years. And you know what I'm talking about? Like that's, I don't know. I've, it's just so interesting how people put value on stuff. Zac Efron, I know it's like impossible of a concept to think that Zac Efron would find a fat woman attractive, but I don't know. I Zac heard- Efron looks worse than he ever has now uh, because of that, like, plastic surgery and making his jaw, like, incredibly. But whatever, yes, he is a very attractive man. He could like whatever he likes. There are rumors that him and Nikki Blonsky dated in real life, so... So? Believe it. Like, you'd be Believe surprised. it! <laughs> I am 20 years old, and I've never been in a relationship, and I am scared. It's not, it's okay. If you're 20 years old and you've never been in a relationship, it's not the worst, Okay. Don't feel like you're rushing it. At 20, it's fine. Like, dude, I didn't even lose my virginity until I was 21. I didn't... Uh, I don't think I had my first girlfriend until I was, like, 24 or something like that. Or, like, 22 or something. I don't know. But the point I'm making is, like, it's okay. Like, things take time. And it might actually be a good idea to not do these things until you know you're ready. Because... You know, you might end up do making the wrong decisions. I, you know how many people I know that told that tell me like oh man i really wish i if i could go back i wouldn't have had sex with that person i wouldn't have been been in that relationship i wouldn't have put up with that i wouldn't have done this a lot of people and maybe you do have to go through some trials and tribulations to like understand those things but a lot of people would probably if they could they wouldn't do it so if you're 20 don't feel like you're under any pressure now don't get me wrong like i said with the other girl when she was 30 i don't know how old she was but she hadn't dating in 10 years i i just like it's okay at her age to do that, but dude, if you go 10 years without dating, that's a problem. That's an issue, bro. This woman's 20. That that's because of my body. I'm obviously mid-size or plus-size or fat or whatever you want to call it. Definitely, 100%. I, you know what? Actually, I got to keep it a buck. I'm not trying to be mean here. I did not think she was 20. I, I, pro- I thought she was like 30. I thought she was in her 30s. I thought she was probably like 30, like 31. They, I did, okay. I'm not trying to be mean. I don't know why I see so many people nowadays. It looks significantly older than they actually are. I don't know. I don't know, bro. I meet too many. I see too many people nowadays that look way too old for what they say they are. How are you 20? Okay. You're 20. Maybe it's like an ambiguous term. Maybe it's like 29. You know, like, I don't know, man. Whatever. Call it. Um, and I... For, I think, two years now or so, I've known that I would like to be in a relationship, and that doesn't mean that, you know, I'm going to lower my standards to get into a relationship with just anybody, but if somebody were to come along, that would be really, that would make me happy. You Careful. you got to be careful with these words, because it's not that it would make you happy. I hope that you would find the right relationship, and then that would make you happy. Not just being in a relationship would make you happy. That's like somebody saying, oh man, food would make me really happy. And then some BBC shows up. Like, you know, it's technically food, right? So suck up on that shit. So be careful. Like, hopefully that the relationship you're talking about is a fulfilling one and not just a random guy and you're happy because you have a man and that's it. Like, you know how many people I know that just put up with very bad relationships because they have a relationship? That's bad. That's terrible. That's not a good thing. I don't care if you, it, it, like, you can claim I have a boyfriend and that somehow is, like, better than not having a boyfriend even though the guy's like abusing you or saying terrible, disgusting shit to you every single day and mistreating you, you just don't put up with that shit. I see it too often. But hopefully she means like an actual fulfilling relationship. Um, and I feel like it's happening for everyone around me, but it never happens for me. And I just, it's really hard not to think that that's because of my body. Because- it's definitely playing a role. If you're a dating man, you need to lose weight. I just, I, I, I hate to tell you this shit, bro. I'm not trying to be like misogynistic or sexist or whatever. Men are predominantly going to be attracted by not fat. And most people are not, you know, most women are not attracted to people that are fat, but like, especially men who are very visual. Yeah, dude, um, nah, you're gonna have to lose weight. That's a factual statement. I don't, uh, it sucks to say that. I understand that like people don't want to change. And they want to stay very comforted in their body or whatever. And it's very easy for somebody to say, like, nah, I'm good exactly the way I am. But it's very difficult to actually make changes. But, yeah. 
it's probably i mean it's, there's probably other stuff at play too obviously but it's your weight yeah definitely the weight's not helping because not to like blow steam. and the style probably too i don't know like I don't know why you're dressed up like Woody Allen. Uh, I don't know what, wh where'd you get this outfit from? Up my own ass, but um, I have lots of wonderful and amazing friends and I think that wouldn't be the case if my personality were shitty, right? So I feel like that can't be the problem. So what else could be except my body? I don't know. Um, I think it's just one of those days where the fear of never being wanted or never being loved because of how I look is really loud. Sometimes people will go through a lot of the same problems for like a long time and not do anything about it. I just hope that she makes those changes today. Whether you're plus size or not, how you present yourself online should be how you show up in person. Period. Like if you're going to online date, post pictures with filters, post pictures without filters, post pictures without makeup, post pictures with makeup, post close-ups post full body so the person that you are talking to can see you from all angles can see you in different angles and different stages because how you present yourself online is how you need to present yourself when you show up in person she, she she's right dude you know especially i feel like a lot of people don't realize this but the the change in our culture in the last five years alone never mind like 10 years that is night and day difference but in, even in the last five years has been so drastic like if you've been out of the dating the dating game for a good amount of time you may not even understand how different it is nobody is meeting people online anymore no one my bad not nobody's meeting people in public anymore nobody's talking to anybody anymore like the great thing about the internet is that it brings people together right but it also pushes people apart because the only interaction that a lot of people have is like the way we are right now like you you beautiful person watching this video currently or maybe you're talking to your friends on discord or maybe you're playing your minecraft with, the, with a certain friend and in this case online dating nobody is like going outside anymore and meeting people to talk to or hey can i get your number hey can i get your snapchat or whatever the fuck so in a lot of ways even though the internet has pushed us together it's pulled us apart as well so and it's drastic it's like very very drastic like five six seven years ago you might it might have been like an augmentation to your life like maybe you were you were online dating here and there but nowadays it's almost like solely online dating so the difference of like meeting somebody out in real life compared to online dating is that if i see somebody in real life I can immediately identify like almost everything. Like, I can see your front, I can see your back, I can see like your whole body structure, I can see how you react in real life too, like I can see how you move, things like that. These things are all very, very important for most people. But when you're online and you're just looking through like four or five pictures, it's very difficult to put that full picture together because it's almost kind of like building a puzzle and you're missing like most of the pieces. So yes, you need to make sure that when you're putting these pictures out, or like whatever you're giving out, it needs to be accurate. It needs to be 100% accurate to who you are when you meet up with that person. Honest, she's not an ugly girl. She's a very beautiful girl. But the video she posted explaining the story to us versus the outfit she wore versus her BLK profile was three different people, let's True. be honest. And how she presented herself online was not how she presented herself to that man when she showed up Damn. on the date. And that man, that's 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 some good there's some good advice here. I mean it's basic advice, but it's good that advice. This could help like a lot of people. Definitely when you're making your dating profile, be accurate. The secrets I could tell about being a plus size woman in the dating world is out of this world. Out of people that are ashamed that they like plus size people. Can you like sit up when you make this video? I mean, I'm not trying to control her, but it's just kind of weird. This world. Out of people that are ashamed that they like plus size people is a lot larger than you fucking think. That, no pun intended. No pun intended, dude. That like plus size people, no pun intended. I have been with misogynistic men who think they are the alpha male and just that very mucho macho kind of crap but they secretly love a big bitch true there are plenty of there are plenty of people that are very very one way and then another way when they you know what i'm talking like i've seen this countless times like yeah i'm a big man i'm a 
I'm a fucking gangster dog. And then when they're with their girlfriends, they're like cuddling, they're grabbing onto them, they're fucking leaning on them and telling them they love them. All this other stuff, like they wouldn't be caught dead doing that shit on public. But, you know, what, how they act in public versus how they act in private is going to be completely different. So I'm not, I mean, this makes a lot of sense. Yeah, this makes a lot of sense. Anyway, guys, we're going to end the video here. So I hope everybody enjoyed today's video. And if you did, I'd appreciate it if you could like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I'd appreciate tremendously. If you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in pink because I have this thing on my neck and it's a pink thing. I got it from a pride parade today and cool people, cool people, dude, they just threw them at you and they said, here you go. Maybe it wasn't pride. There was a lot of... Uh, I, they, they they were drag queens, I think. There was a bunch of drag queens. Yeah. Check my Instagram. Check my Instagram. And then scroll down. You'll see the picture. I took a picture with a drag queen. She was very nice. And she said yes. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. All right. I don't know how they identify, but it doesn't matter. Regardless, um, follow me on Instagram, please. All right. And also, do all the things I said. Like, comment, subscribe. Help me grow in the algorithm. Um, by the way, I got to let you know. You look absolutely gorgeous today. Your hairline is so on peak. It's it's just ridiculously shaped, and it's good, and it's beautiful. Your pheromones that you're leaking off your body are so amazing. That smells so good. I almost didn't even realize that you were a human being. I, I thought you were some kind of, like, deity or some type of, like, angelic being because I almost couldn't I, – I, like, mm, like, garlic bread mixed with – some type of pistachio pudding. It was so good. It smelled so amazing. The way you tie your shoelaces too, by the way, mm, piece of resistance. You look so good today. But anyway, guys, um, we're going to the video here. If you want to check out my social media, it'll be linked down below in the description. It's my Instagram, my Twitter, my Discord. It'll all be listed in the description of the channel and the description of this video. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.